Hey everybody, Adam Savage, and I am at my friend Fawn Davis's shop, Fawn Co. in LA. How are you, sir? Uh, great. Good to see Wonderful. you. We, we're, I love this room. I just, I love the smell of this room. I love yep. the machine tools. This is your effects lab. Yes. Okay. Uh, tell me what goes on in here. Uh, this is where we do all of our uh, technology-driven fabrications. So a lot of our machining for robotics, all of our electronics, lighting, that kind of stuff. And then of course, all our 3D printing. So what you mean is like, other than, different than a casting room where you'd be just making molds, this is where you're integrating parts that you're building with the technology that you're using, lights, yes. electronics, et cetera. Exactly, okay. exactly. And the 3D printers. So we printers. have the CNC, the 3D printers. We do have vacuum forming machines yep. in here Yeah, as well. I saw that, I saw so that. Your old red one. Yep, <laughs> we built those at the same time, yes. <laughs> Still going. Um, can you tell me about this big printer just for a second? Yeah, this is, okay, this is our newest printer. Okay. So um, this is called a fashion printer. Um, it's the uh, J850 from Stratasys. So all our, all our primary machines that we use for the bigger jobs of yeah. the Stratasys machines. Yeah, yeah. Um, And what? this, what it can do is it can print on fabric. So this is just kind of an example. And you can see there's some stuff on here that's lenticular. Right. And you can do lenticular on other printers. But fabric, it's, you can see how it's way more effective. Scylla, are you kidding me? This is crazy. Yeah. And then you can also, whoop, you can also print in flexible <laughs> materials. We have printed on spandex and yep, it stretches. Yep, yep, right. Everything's great. So no more, so no more screen printing those superhero costumes. You can just print out. Yeah, you could print it and you can make it dimensional in any way you want. Like those are little tiny pyramids that are also lenticular. Fawn, that's crazy. Yeah. So whoever wants to make costumes with this machine for their feature will get an Academy Award <laughs> for costume because it's never been done before. Right. We, it's still, like I said, it's a very, very new machine. Wow. So. I'm totally blown away by this. You must be so excited to have this. We are, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. And there's only so many of these in the world, so um, it's a pretty rare uh, ability. So I'm looking at pieces here that are almost a centimeter high. Is there an upper limit for how high you can print on this? Uh, just the limits of the machine. So I think this could go up to about 10 inches. Not that you would ever want that on fabric. What? Um, but you do have to, the way this works is you clamp the fabric into this frame mm -hmm. and then you print into the fabric. So the, in testing with the machine, the, the fabric does have to have a weave. Right. for the material to bond uh, to. So you can't print so on Tyvek. Exactly. And you also can't print on anything that has, if, if, you're, if you're doing little parts, you want a, a tight enough weave. So we did a mesh. Pieces started to fall off of that if they were too small. Oh, fascinating. But that, that's course. just science. If right, the part right. is smaller than the hole in the fabric, then obviously it's not going to attach. Fair. Um, and then, so when we need bigger pieces of fabric, we just move them in the frame. Oh, right. You can just keep yeah, on. Yeah, you just keep printing. Oh, that is super yeah. cool. And oh, you can build special uh, templates and things like that. For alignment. Um, for and different, different, right. different, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and usually with a costume, you're not doing large monolithic pieces, right. you're doing panels. Yeah, and that's all designed in the computer now anyway. So. Right, how they lay out yeah. to each other, yeah. We might hand pattern something, but we also scan it because we want those patterns digitally. Um, are you starting to think about just experiments with this to, to push it and see what it can do? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, I want to make a jacket. Yes. It's, it, well, you, know, you know how it is. Your personal projects, it's like, when do you have free time? Yeah. That's why it took me 20 years to do my R2-D2. <laughs> <Fair. laughs> right? Yeah. But if we made one for a movie, it'd be done in a month. Exactly. No, that person went, <laughs> so, I had had a month between jobs. That's how that's I finished how you my finished yours. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, the solidness of these triangles is also blowing my mind about movement. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a matter of how you design it, you know? So um, the fabric obviously acts as a hinge. Can this print in other softer, more flexible materials? Yes, in fact. Oh right, that's what you were saying about this. Right, so that and, well, this is, this is where it gets even more fun. Yeah. Like uh, you can print in color, in flexible materials. So we did, uh, we did a class for the Stan Winston School. No Where way. I talk about technology and fabrication. Yeah, yeah. And w one of the samples that we did for the lesson was building an animatronic octopus, which is what the, which is those are from. Okay. But also, you can do. This is a 3D print. In color. In color. Yeah. I mean, you, uh, the, Stratus has sent me some bananas that we covered on the channel. <laughs> uh, all four different sizes, all four are beautiful in color. But just like this, as an effects guy, this opens up so much. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing. The shoot, was, yeah, we slathered it with lubricant oh, like yeah. we do, and, and it looked great. <laughs> Shot at high speed, and we worked with uh, Habib Jagampur, who did the tidal wave 
uh, effects in Perfect Storm. Oh my gosh. And he did our effects, he and his wife did the effects for um, Dude, also the color for this. is really, really gorgeous. Like, it's amazing, right? The purple, the edges, the, the subtleties around the white suckers, it's, it feels like from here, it's selling to me. Yeah. Yeah, you would never guess that this was 3D printed. No, well, no, I no. wouldn't guess. Right, I mean, no, I would think it was yeah. on the menu. And then obviously we add the armature after the fact. Right, but, um, right, right. You've been working with Stratasys now for like a decade. Yeah, just about. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and they they've been great. So if if we have jobs that are too big for our machines here, we can even get stuff printed with them because of oh. our partnerships. Yeah. So yeah, we do a lot of stuff with them, dude. That and, is, and also they help us. Like when we have things that like, okay, how are we going to do this? Right. We we have a, a company we can lean on and and kind of work together to figure out very difficult technical projects. They probably love the weird crap you bring them. That's that's why we work <laughs> with them, because we, we are always pushing the envelope, especially yeah, in technology. Yeah. I've always been uh, suffering from what I call early adopter syndrome. I have to have the newest technology as soon as it comes out. Yep. And the side effect of that is I have very good relationships with the companies that come out with that technology, because we're always pushing their machines to the absolute right. limit. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yep. Okay, let's do this. So, so we have, a, this is nothing new. We do have a machine that can print um, FDM. And we use this for all our structural parts. Gorgeous. So it's, it's in our yep. arsenal. It can print <laughs> carbon fiber as well. Oh, So yeah, wow. this was for. Oh, nice. An it's chemical mag. Yeah, so anything, anytime you need yeah. extra strength. Right, right, that's right. That's the machine we Oh, use. so you can print carbon fiber into this. Yes. Oh, super cool. Yeah, this is all um, ABS, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but, but the machine does have the capability to do carbon fiber. And we just haven't had a need yet. Yeah, oh, okay. Like, you know how it is, you're, <laughs> you're waiting, waiting for that project, yeah. <laughs> you're um, going through every meeting being like, oh, you're gonna need a lot more strength for this one. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so we can do that. And then we have our J55s, which are these two machines here. Yeah. Um, the way these work and the way that uh, actually all the color machines work here Oh, okay. You can print, you have to be able to print black and white, obviously. Right. Um, but you have CMYK, just like you would in an inkjet printer. Mm -hmm. And so these cartridges um, allow us to print. And you can get these in flexible or rigid. These are all translucent by nature, and you lay down white if you want to print opaque. Oh, wow. Just like a printer. Yeah, 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 yeah. But on that, you print on paper. So you're mimicking the paper. Amazing. Um, and this is an example. This is one that, of my favorites. That's insane. Margaret Dost, a friend of mine, modeled this. Um, this is what it looks like straight out of the machine. There's no sanding, no paint on this piece. That's... <laughs> right? I'm almost annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, you know, I've noticed there's a lot of trends in uh, modern fabrication. It's one of the reasons we did the extra Stan Winston class. Mm -hmm. Uh, is because a lot of the arts are moving in this direction. Right. It's a solid, you still need a solid foundation in traditional art. Yeah. And traditional art techniques. Indeed. But the technology is, you're, you're, it's, we're getting to a point now where you have fewer artists av available to do things like sculpting, but more artists available to do digital sculpting. So there is definitely a sea change in how we do things in the industry now. Fascinating. Based on the labor pool that's available. Right, right. Know? Do you find that your digital artists still are best when they've had a grounding in physical sculpting? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Any digital artist that does both is always going to have a better idea because part of it is also you have to understand how fabrication works. Right, right. So if you work with someone who's really green, they might have pieces that float in space. Yeah, like a tenth a, of a millimeter a computer, on something and it's barely, right. yeah. Yeah. And like you need the structure, uh, but you also, yeah, like, you need grab. You have gravity in real real space, and yeah. then in the computer you don't have gravity. So we've had literally things designed that would require floating. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's that's part of our job. I feel like curve. also is to be the spirit guide for our clients right. when they come to us with one of those. Designs. Oh, fair. Yeah, yeah. So, that's all part of the process for us. Um, the subtlety on the painting of this is really remarkable. Yeah. Like as a painter, that again, that's a very talented artist, oh, and she, and she yeah. paints figurines and things like that. So you see where the the practical yeah. uh, you know work right. affects the way right. she does her digital work. Right. She understands how to delineate with blacks to bring the details mm -hmm. out. And you can see the shading in the in the braids. No, the shading in the braids yeah. is clutch, man. It's yeah. really an amazing piece. Yeah, and then this is this is Elliot Sirota, oh, who's one of our art directors here. God, he designed this. This is, is mutton chops. <laughs> an original creature design that he did. I love mutton chops. He's waiting under the bed. 
<laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> well, that's one of the things that we do offer um, artists that, that, that we work with. We'll print these things for free if they do a, a really great design that we can share. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. So it's like a good exchange. <clears throat> yeah. That's and then we get beautiful things like this. Right, and right, this. right. <laughs> Um, but it can, this is a good example of translucent. So it can print in translucent color. Wow. So opaque or translucent. And then um, this, this is one of the, uh, huh. we've been doing more and more of this too. We print, uh, basically when we work on a documentary, uh, a lot of times like this was for Stan Lee, doc, the Stan Lee documentary okay. on Disney Plus. Uh, we won an Emmy for this, our art department did. Um, but basically, they don't have photographs of his early life or yeah. his early career because he was born in the 30s. And we're actually finding this in a lot of documentaries that go back into history. So we've been recreating scenes in miniature. Oh, um, and like then dioramas. Them. Right, right, of right. Of the scene that you would want a photograph of or video. Oh, that's neat. And we've done it with, we've done these with puppets. We've done this with uh, uh, Black Barbie that's yeah. on uh, Netflix, just got nominated for an Emmy as well. And we did the same thing on that show. We used Barbies and built miniature sets to convey uh, the storytelling of the documentary. That's amazing. And so. this is, again, this is a single print. Even yep. the patterning on the dress. I mean, I'm looking at her little tiny ring finger bending around the handle yeah. there. Like every detail is perfect. Yeah, it's, it's a huge time saver. Well, and so many of the things that we design these days, we, we start in the computer to show the clients the right. computer design. You could do a turnaround. So that, that path to arriving at a design also has evolved over the years. But you, I, clearly, you're also your brain trust here. And this digital sculpt is masterful. You know, we have some very talented the Fabric artists. moving is like yeah. chef's kiss. That's yeah. amazing. It's, I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> okay. So now, for yeah. the really fun one, uh, Norman sent us a 3D model of your scan. Oh no, the one from the Just, Spectral. Yes, so this is the Spectral scan, 3D scan, yeah. and it was done in color, so we were able to do a 3D print in color. Now, mind you, this is straight from scan to print. There's no There's post no modification. <laughs> but when you, when you realize that, it's actually really, really remarkable how it turned Whoa. out. <laughs> Whoa, it looks like I was frozen to death. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a little light. So obviously this would be a prototype if we right. were doing a manufacturing of this in any way. So we would like tweak this. We would also adjust, like you can see in the ear where it's really hard for yeah, the scanner yeah. to pick up sure. uh, color it's, information. Oh my God, this is crazy great. Isn't that nuts? Also, it looks like there's underpainting. Like Yeah, and that's, that's, <laughs> that's and same with, with uh, this one. Yeah. Uh, because you can actually uh, adjust that. It's what in CG they call subsurface scattering. Because it's printing with because translucent oh ink my God. over white, you can get a certain amount of subsurf subsurface scattering. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear, if you told me, I would have more believed someone painted this than it could be a digital print. Because it looks so much like there's underpainting and overpainting yeah. and a subtle and attack on that. And you really see the, the, the difference in tone yes. in your skin. Dude, that is absolutely the eeriest <laughs> casting of, of, of rendition of my head yet. Yes. <laughs> I know. That's what I thought. I was like, that's kind of creepy, but <laughs> accurate, but also kind of pale. <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> it does pale. Look you do look frozen. My hair isn't quite that gray. No. No, it's a little warmer than that. <laughs> Dude, why you guys should, I would be printing everybody I know. <laughs> oh yeah, well this goes back to the rule. I have to actually have, a, uh, oh, do I have one in here? I do, okay, so there's a rule. <laughs> if you own a 3D scanner yes. and you own a, a 3D printer, you have to print an action figure of yourself. Oh. So that's the Fawn Davis action <laughs> figure. <laughs> it's funny, it almost is like, uh, these two could also be uh, NPCs in a video game. Right? <laughs> right, you know, they're walking in the... <laughs> I love, it. yeah, you're right, action figure. You're serious there. Boy, so are yeah, you. No, you're very serious. It's like a tendency to, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have to we'll have to plop you on a, a body. Dude, there. <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, what this gives you uh, in terms of, the hardest part of working with clients, mm -hmm. in my experience, is always getting them to translate in their heads between a 2D meeting and a 3D thing yes. that will eventually be produced. Yeah. And this just cuts so much of that out for you, I would imagine. Oh, absolutely. I always say that like, if you bring a maquette or a, a mock-up to a meeting, it changes that meeting uh, to an event. 
Right. Like if you're pitching something, it's great because you you put you can see the reaction of people in in a, it's usually in a boardroom. Yeah. Everyone sits around. Someone's got maybe a monitor with a slideshow, you know, <laughs> or their iPad, and they're yeah. like, this this is a concept art. But when you walk in with a maquette and you set that on the table, everyone's out of their chairs. Yeah. Everyone's out of their chairs. They're looking at it. They're getting excited. And I actually think that that actually helps sell shows. I'm sure. Um, we've I'm done sure. a lot of lot of those, and you see a real kind of improvement in what's getting like greenlit well, based I mean, on having a maquette in a meeting. How many meetings have you gone to with a primer gray model and been told, I don't love the color? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, I've not seen that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, because we do, we, we've done the gray maquettes. Yeah. These were for Ultraman Rising when they were pitching that show around. This is for a dinosaur show. So we do try to do color now. Yeah, of because course, that's can. what I mean is it's so easy right. for you to do color now. Yeah. But I haven't, I haven't had complaints about the gray ones. Actually, oh, I take it back. These are the gray ones we have. The, we did paint those. Yeah. I think we just paint them now or we print them in color. Right. So I guess we don't deliver a lot of gray models. Yeah. yeah. I stopped doing it because the client would just not be able to understand. Interesting, interesting. You had to show them a paint job. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. I could get a passport photo made out of this thing. <laughs> you could. <laughs> um, dude, thank you so much oh, you for bet. walking me through Thanks the beautiful technology. By. You guys always are fun. always, always out at the leading edge of technology, and I love that. We try. It's beautiful. It's costly, though. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for watching that video. If while watching any of my videos you like, any of the t-shirts that you see me wearing, well, you can go buy them. And there's two places you can get them. First, you can go to tested-store.com, a web address that my crew laughs is one of the hardest things for me to remember in my whole brain. But now they've given me a second URL. You can now go to adamsavage.com and buy any of the t-shirts you see me wearing on this channel. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff there too. Thanks.